The capillary puncture, also called a dermal puncture or finger stick, is an efficient means of collecting a blood specimen when only a small amount of blood is needed or when the patient's condition makes venipuncture difficult. Check the provider's order and the requisition form to determine which tests have been ordered. Gather the appropriate tubes and supplies before you begin. Once the skin has been punctured, you must proceed quickly so that the blood doesn't clot before the entire specimen has been collected. To make sure you have the right patient, verify her identity using two identifiers. Hi. Can I get your name and date of birth? Jennifer Jansen. As part of infection control, sanitize your hands. Wear a fluid impermeable lab coat and disposable gloves. You must explain the capillary puncture and obtain permission for legal reasons, but describing the procedure also encourages the patient's cooperation. Depending on the patient's age and the sample needed, choose a puncture site. For an adult, the distal portion of the middle or ring finger of the non-dominant hand is often used because that hand may have fewer calluses. For an infant, the medial or lateral curved surface of the heel can be used. Gently rub the patient's finger along the sides to promote circulation. If the finger is very cold, you can immerse it in warm water or warm it with warm towels. Clean the site with alcohol and let it air dry. Puncturing skin that's wet with alcohol is painful and can hemolyze the specimen. With your non-dominant index finger and thumb, hold the patient's finger on the sides near the puncture site. This gives you better control of the puncture, which you'll perform with your dominant hand. Hold the safety lancet against the patient's finger and press the button to activate the needle or blade. After puncturing the skin at a specific depth, it'll automatically retract. Next, dispose of the lancet in the sharps container. With clean, sterile gauze, wipe away the first drop of blood. It contains tissue fluid, which may alter the test results. Apply gentle pressure, let up, then reapply the pressure. This intermittent pressure helps the blood flow freely. Don't squeeze too hard. Forceful squeezing frees fluid that dilutes the blood, causing inaccurate results. Express a large drop of blood and touch the end of the tube to it, not to the finger. Fill the capillary tube about three quarters full or to the indicator line if it has one. Pre-sealed end down, tip the tube. When the blood flows down and touches the sealant, hold the tube for 30 seconds to allow it to seal automatically. Wipe the patient's finger with a clean, sterile gauze pad. Express another large drop of blood and fill a microtainer. Don't touch the container to the finger. If more blood is needed, wipe the puncture with sterile gauze and gently squeeze another drop. Then cap the microtainer tube. When collection is complete, apply pressure to the puncture site. The patient may be able to help with this step. Be sure to label the containers. Sealed capillary tubes can be placed in a red top tube, which is then labeled. The microtainers can be placed in a zipper lock biohazard bag that is then labeled. Check the patient for bleeding and clean the site if traces of blood are visible. Apply a non-allergenic bandage. Disinfect the work area. Use the biohazard waste container to dispose of blood contaminated materials. Remove your lab coat and gloves and sanitize your hands to ensure infection control. Complete the laboratory requisition form and route the specimen to the proper place. Record the procedure in the patient's record. Remember, a procedure isn't considered done until it's been recorded.